So DJI might be entering the FPV market. What challenges might they face? Let's discuss. Hi, I'm Ashwin Droning On, and I'm currently on holiday in Sunny Beach, which is a lovely little place in Bulgaria. And the temperature outside is about 31 degrees, so I'll be jumping in that pool and grabbing a beer very quickly. But I just wanted to put out a quick video about the challenges that DJI might face if they are indeed going into the FPV market. Now, DJI tried to enter the FPV market a few years ago by the launch of their Snail system, which is a set of brushless motors and speed controllers, but it just didn't really succeed. And people that raced with them, or at least test flew them, just weren't impressed. But now there are some new FCC filings which show new kit being developed, and it is labelled with FPV. But let's not forget that FPV stands for first person view. And when you're flying your Mavic or your Phantom drone up there, you're looking at the screen, which is FPV. So this doesn't mean necessarily that they are releasing some FPV kit, but it certainly could be. And I've actually looked at one of the screenshots of the FCC filings. The sticker does indeed look like the shape of a set of FPV goggles. But again, those goggles can be used with a regular Mavic or Phantom. So it's all yet to be seen. Regardless, watch this space. Now, unlike many content creators that are talking about Mavics and DJI products all day long, I do fly FPV quads and race them. I'm not particularly great, but at least I can fly them. So I can give some good insight, I believe, into where DJI might struggle, or at least the challenges that they face trying to enter this market. So without further ado, let's walk through each of these elements now. Beginners. So this is a big topic for racing drones and certainly entering into the FPV market. It's not easy. Flying an FPV quad is nothing like flying a Mavic or a Phantom where you let go of the controls and it stays exactly where it is because that depends on GPS and VPS and optical positioning. A racing drone doesn't generally have any of that. And so if DJI are entering the FPV market, they need to decide whether they're going to target FPV professionals or FPV amateurs. And whichever they choose, it's gonna be a completely different approach. Perhaps there'll be a few varieties of aircraft on offer. To be truly good at FPV flying as well, you do need quick reactions. And that's why generally you tend to find in the racing competitions, the people at the top of that league table are young. You very rarely see your 50, 60 year olds or even 40 year olds in there. So they're gonna to have to make it easy or they're gonna to have to focus on the professional market. The next one is complexity. Now, when you set up an FPV quad, you don't buy it like you do a Mavic and fly it straight out of the box. You've got a lot of configuration in beta flight or clean flight. You've got speed controller configuration in BL Heli and others. It does take quite a lot of time to actually get these aircraft flying. You also need to set up what's called PIDs and rates and lots of other configuration settings. So if DJI are aiming at the beginner, this is all gonna to have to be automated. On the other hand, if they're aiming to the professional market, then they're gonna to have to cater for all of these configuration options. Otherwise, the professionals will simply not be interested. The next one is autonomy. Now, DJI drones are packed full of autonomous features like GPS, VPS, return to home, GLONASS, everything else that automates these aircraft and makes them very easy to fly. But you just can't do that with an FPV quad. Some of them are equipped with GPS at least, which gives you some position hold, but certainly the other kit, sensors and additional cameras for stability are just not viable on an FPV quad, largely because you do spend a lot of time crashing FPV quads. And if you crash them and they're packed full of sensors, those sensors are going to get destroyed. So the reality is if they're heading for the FPV market, DJI might struggle to get that kind of autonomy in there. And so I just don't think that this is gonna be aimed at beginners. The next one is video quality. Now, FPV racing has been using 5.8 gig analog video for years. The reason is that the latency is minimal, as low as 10 milliseconds. Now, when you compare that to the latency that you get from HD digital video feeds, which are much higher, I think you're then up to about 50 milliseconds. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but actually when you're racing a quad at high speed through the air and you're trying to get through a gate or a gap in a tree, 
milliseconds matter. So if the DJI system uses analog video, it's gonna be rapid and real time, but the downside is the quality. You're looking at very, very low resolutions from analog cameras, and that puts off a lot of people who consider FPV because they want the glorious HD resolution when they're flying their Mavics and Phantoms. They don't really want to be dropping down to an analog picture through their FPV goggles. Now, there are HD digital systems out there like Connex, which do have lower latency, but still not as low as analog. So perhaps DJI are going to work out a way to transmit HD video in very, very low latency, as they already have with OcuSync, but it's gonna to have to be quicker. So the next one is range. Now we're used to the Mavic and the Phantom aircraft having range as far as seven kilometers. You should always be flying it line of sight, of course, but the expectation of an FPV quad from DJI might be that you can fly that kind of range as well. Now, there are long range FPV systems which do give you that kind of range. One of them is Crossfire by Black Sheep, I believe, TBS. But whether DJI can compete with that or whether they even want to offer something like that, especially on the basis of the new air safety principles that DJI have adopted. They don't want to encourage long range flight, especially with a quad with minimal fail safes. FPV range generally with your average FPV kit can be about a kilometer, maybe a little bit further, and you are limited more by the video range than the transmitter range. Now here's a big one, weight. Everybody's talking about 250 grams because that seems to be the threshold that almost every country has so far adopted when defining their drone related regulations. And if DJI are to develop an FPV quad, you would expect that it's going to be around that weight or hopefully under it. However, if DJI do make the decision to pack an FPV quad full of autonomy and fail safes, then they might struggle. Because if I look at most of my ready to fly five inch quads, they're all about 250 grams, but mainly over that weight, especially once you attach a battery. And so if you think about that plus GPS, plus perhaps additional sensors, and maybe a longer range transmission digital video system, then it might not be under that magical threshold. Next one is compatibility. Most of us who are already racing FPV already have all of the kit such as goggles, which may have set us back as much as $500. So let's hope that DJI don't focus on proprietary and instead they start looking at developing an open platform whereby we can keep using the standard 5.8 gigahertz video transmission and therefore I can keep using my fat sharks. And finally, here's the big one, cost. Now we all know that DJI are not cheap and no product released so far has ever really been seen as a bargain because they are premium products. But if they are looking at the FPV racing arena, they've got quite a lot of competition because unlike the aerial photography platform market, FPV market is already saturated with loads of brands, loads of manufacturers, all competing to produce the next biggest and best. The other consideration is evolution of that market. There's a new drone from most manufacturers such as Fury Bee or Eoshin produced almost every single week, all coming out of China. And so if FPV is going to be the next market of focus for DJI, they're really gonna have to evolve very, very quickly. And I don't mean firmware upgrades, I mean hardware. So that potentially means a lot of cost. And I just hope that if this is their new market, they keep those costs low. Now, all of this means nothing if DJI are not gonna release an FPV drone, but if they do, hopefully this video has been useful. Because as I mentioned, not many content creators in the DJI space know anything about FPV racing drones or quads. So comment below with your thoughts, give this video a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. I'm very sorry for the slowness of content recently. I'm on holiday at the moment and I was on holiday before that as well. Anyway, family time is key and my advice to other content creators, just as a side note, if you're on holiday, put content creation aside and spend that time with your family because it is just YouTube. I love you guys and I love your support, but I'm sure you enjoy your holidays as well. So I'm gonna go off and enjoy mine and thank you very much for watching.